continuing the discussion of fractions, multiplying and dividing. So we already did a little bit of this in the last section, at least the multiplying part. So we said to find the product, in other words, to multiply. We just multiply straight across. Okay, so that'd be 10 over 15. And then we reduce the fraction, write it in lowest terms. So we did this in the last section. So the result or the product would be 2 thirds. Okay, multiply straight across, negative 3 times 4, 8 times 5. Okay, so then let's see, uh, I can divide top and bottom both by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 40 divided by 4 is 10. Okay, if I have three factors, I still just multiply all the way across the numerator and denominator. Okay, let me see, negative 6, negative 25, negative 9, the bottom, 5 times 3 times 2 times 5. Then I start canceling common factors. Um, let's see, 3, 3. 2, 2, and I can cancel the 5, but it's going to leave me with that negative in front. So what is left? So negative 3 times a negative 1 times a negative 3 over just a 1. So 3 times negative 3. So all of that comes out to be just negative 9. I have 12 over 1. Remember, there's an implied 1 if I have a whole number. So, multiply straight across. Going to need to reduce the fraction. So, let me go ahead and write these guys in terms of their prime factors. Um, I didn't break down 4, did I? 4 is 2 times 2. So this one comes out to be negative 9 also. That's interesting. Find each quotient. In other words, divide. So to divide two fractions, multiply by the reciprocal of the second. So what the heck do I mean by that? So here's another way I could phrase that. I could say, in other words, flip the second fraction and multiply. The reciprocal means I invert the fraction, I flip it. Okay, so when I'm finding the quotient, I'm really using that rule. So in other words, the first fraction stays the same. I find the reciprocal of the second fraction. In other words, I flip it. And then I change to a multiplication. Okay, and then I'm just multiplying straight across. Write these 
their prime factors. Five times two, 10 over three. There's my quotient. Okay, so to divide here, I have to make sure I keep in mind that 28 is 28 divided by one. So it's reciprocal, or when I flip it, I have one over 28. So I'm just left with a one in the numerator. Over, what is that, 49 times two? 49 times two is what, 98? Okay, so negative 10 is negative 10 over 1. Change to a multiplication and I reciprocate, I find the reciprocal of the second fraction. Multiply straight across, break these up. any common factors. Okay, so I've got negative 2 times 3 times 2 over 7. So negative 6 times 2, is that negative 12 over 7? negative two-thirds, flip the second fraction. Multiply. Threes cancel. So negative 10 over negative 1, remember a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Okay. This is a special one because remember zero divided by any number is zero. So if I have zero divided by two, I just have zero. So zero divided by five sixteenths is well, zero, right? I mean, if I wanted to show that, I'd say, well, first fraction stays the same, second fraction flips and I multiply straight across, but zero times 16 is zero. Okay, so if I have zero in the numerator, the result is just going to be zero. And what about some of these one, ones with variables? Okay, so first fraction stays the same. Second fraction flips. multiply straight across. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'll start breaking things up. Okay, so 25 times 4, x cubed, x times x times x, 15, 5 times 3, y squared, y times y, okay, what can I cancel, those, Two of those, one of those, and one of those. Cool. So what am I left with? A five, an X, another five, and a Y over a one. Well, that comes out nice. same thing first fraction stays the same uh oh this one's a multiplication so this one will be a little review then so multiplying well we just multiply straight across so let's see it's gonna be x is 21 x squared y x, 7 times 3, x times x times y, 3 times 2 times y times y. Okay, so here, that means 7x quantity squared. That's the one where I have to multiply 7x by 7x, right? So I have a 7, an x, and another 7, and another x. Okay, so x can go, 7 can go, x can go, y can go, 3 can go, and I think that's it. like an x in the numerator and a 14y in the denominator. So here's something a little different. Find two sevens of 1,400. Actually, this is really easy. But I don't know. I could even start out with an easier one here. Just to show you. Find a half of 100. Well, how do you do that? You just take the half and you multiply it by the 100, right? Half of 100 is 50. So to find two sevenths of 1400, you're just multiplying the two together, right? 1400 is 1400 over 1. Then you just have to reduce. So you start breaking down 1400. So I notice it's 14 times 100. That way I can see my 7 in there. So 
So two sevenths of 1400 is 400. Solve the equation. So what does this mean? This means isolate the variable. Or in other words, in this case, we'd say get the x by itself on one side of the equation. So if I have an equation, that means these two sides are equal. So anything I do to one side, I have to also do to the other side. So I don't know, I, I have some options. Maybe I start by adding a nine to both sides. So I have to work with my like terms. So six plus nine is 15. Bring the rest of the equation down. Now, how about I add this four X to both sides? So then I have 15 equals six X. So then to get x by itself, I have to get rid of this coefficient, that multiplier. So I have to divide both sides by 6. So my x is now isolated. It's 15 over 6. I just have to reduce that fraction. So it looks like I've isolated my x solved my equation, the result is 5 halves. So this next one, the first thing I notice is I have this negative 5 multiplying this whole expression. So I would start by dividing both sides by that negative 5. Then let's add the 3. Divide by 2. So there's my solution. So you can check these by taking our solution and plugging it all the way back in the original equation, making sure we get a true statement. So we have negative 5 times 2 times a half minus 3. Let's see what that gives us. That's negative 5. 2 times a half is 1. Oh, look at that. That is equal to 10. So my solution does check.